Lesson five, configuring the queue options. So in this video clip, we're gonna take a look at modifying the various experiences that a caller may have when they're presented to an agent in an agent queue, and perhaps the agents are already on the phone. What's the experience those callers will have? Now, in the interest of getting the application set up quickly, we used all of the defaults that uh, AWS provides when you create a new instance. And you can see here a list uh, of uh, samples and defaults. And what you need to understand is these are published, which means they're running in your instance. And uh, some of them are going to be nothing more than skeletons or just examples and the expectation is that you will modify these to meet your exact needs. So for example, uh, Agent uh, Whisper, when someone made a menu selection, uh, they were transferred to the agent queue and as the agent answered the call, he heard sales or whatever the name of the queue was that the caller uh, selected. That's an agent whisper. There's also something that can be played to the customer uh, as a whisper when you, uh, before the customer is connected. There's uh, sample uh, interruptible queues. There's a default uh, uh, customer queue, which we're going to look at here because we want to replace that. And the takeaway from this slide is these are defaults, they're samples, and they are active in your instance. So when you're trying to figure out why something did something and you were using the standards, uh, look here. So what we're going to want to do is modify our uh, design uh, to bring it in line with uh, our, our design that we laid out at the onset of this uh, tutorial series. One of the things we want to do is we want to bring the caller into a queue that has some options for that caller. We just don't want to bring them in and start playing music. Uh, we may want to play music uh, uh, 30 seconds later, make an announcement, we love you, please hold the line, play music again for 30, 60 seconds, give them another prompt, and uh, perhaps give them an option to bail out. So uh, we're going to look at these uh, aspects of call flow, and we're going to modify them to more closely fit our design. The inbound uh, the sample default, what it does is it brings you into something called the basic uh, routing profile. Your phone number attaches to a routing profile. That routing profile will contain uh, queues and those queues will have agents associated with them. So the basic routing profile brings together the queues and the agents, and we'll take a look at that in greater detail later on. Uh, there are various types of queues, interruptible queues. We'll look at the agent whisper, and we'll look at queue transfer. So uh, right now, what we want to do is modify the default to provide some options and uh, our design is going to be check the queue status. When we send them off to the queue, we want to check that queue status and figure out uh, uh, what the estimated wait time is. Now the AWS doesn't have estimated wait time, but we're going to kind of fake it. I'll show you how. And then we'll play a, a, a prompt that says, you know, your estimated wait time is greater than or less than, that's how we fake it. Uh, we'll ask them that they want to stay in queue or would they like a call back. Then we'll set the customer default queue experience. Uh, what are they going to experience while they're in hold? And then we'll transfer them off to the queue. That's going to be our design. And we'll also uh, um, create a callback option and generally, we like to make modules of these different call flows because you may have different places in which you want to offer that callback option. You don't want to uh, recreate it in each script each time, uh, create it as a module and then transfer to that call flow when you need it. 
So having said that, let's uh, log in and take a look. So if we take a look at uh, the existing design, uh, after we check the schedule, we bring the caller in uh, to another call flow that enables us to set the call recording behavior. We're going to present a menu of options, which include press one for sales, two for support, and three for ticket status. And then in the current uh, design that we have been using in the previous few uh, lessons, we then transfer the caller off to a flow called sample queue customer. And uh, that's not going to get the job done for us. So I'd like to let's take a look at this sample queue customer and see how it currently works. Sample sample queue customer. And what this does is it uh, sets the queue. Now we've already set the queue. And if we leave this set the way uh, it currently is, they'll get transferred here and the queue will be reset to basic, uh, which by the way, uh, um, is in the previous recording where I show Whisper. I say he pressed one for support. And the fact of the matter is I knew I dialed one for support, but the fact is I had not uh, looking at the script. I didn't realize that uh, it actually got reset to basic queue. And if you listen to that video, you'll hear the whisper say basic queue, not support. Uh, we've already set the queue behavior, so we don't really need to do that here. We already checked the hours of operation, so we don't want to do that here. And then we transfer it off to queue. And if there's an error, we... Uh, we play a, an error prompt and uh, hang up on them. Not, not the best uh, thing to do, but we'll fix that later. So we don't like any of this, and let's make it look like the PowerPoint presentation we just looked at. And in the interest of making things go a little faster, I've already set up uh, that call flow. And um, let's... I've already set up that call flow and I call it step three, enter the queue. So let's take a look at what we do here. Now, the first thing per our design is we want to check the status of the queue. So keep in mind, we've already set the queue. So we know what queue we're checking as we enter this module. We're going to check time in queue. You can check queue capacity. Uh, we're interested in the time. And we set a value here uh, of less than or equal to or greater than. In this case, we're saying if it's, if it's less than three minutes. So that's the uh, value we're going to match on. So if it's less than three minutes, we play a prompt that says the uh, expected wait time is less than three minutes. Or we play a prompt that says the wait time is greater than three minutes. And then we send them on to a get customer prompt, which um, gives them the option of pressing one to continue to hold, or two if you'd like to receive a callback. And at that point, if they elect to get a callback, we send them here. And this um, step called the set customer queue flow is an important step and you're going to want to do that before you transfer to a queue and what this guy does and we'll open him up and take a look at him is it sets the experience the caller will have if they're transferred to queue and the queue is uh, the agents are all engaged in a transaction and the caller has to wait this step here will define um, how that all works and we'll take a look in a minute. Uh, if they elect to get a call back, uh, we will uh, ask them to enter the 10 digit you would like to have us call you back at and uh, we save that value here and uh, we set some attributes uh, we verify here uh, what the call
caller put in, and then we set the callback number. We give them the opportunity here to, you know, the number you entered was, and um, we speak back the digits they entered. Uh, we've done a separate uh, video on this whole uh, uh, speech uh, markup language uh, to um, read the number back to the caller. Uh, it's in a separate clip. Here I just want you to understand the call flow. And we set the number and then we transfer the caller off um, to the callback, to the callback queue. As you recall, we set up a separate uh, queue for callbacks. We could have set, we could send them back to the sales queue if we wanted, but in this design, we're going to have a separate win back team. These are people who will specialize in the calling back folks. So as you can see here, um, we've gone through the schedule check, we've played a menu, we've figured out what queue to transfer the caller, and now we're sending them here to this script that will check the stats of the queue they selected. We'll then ask them if they want to queue or if they want to hold. If they want to hold, we send them off to the queue after setting the call flow behavior. If they want a call back, we give them the option here of um, entering the number for callback. And we could take this itself and put it in a separate module, which we may do later, because I like to keep these things uh, at all separate. Right now, what I want to do is take a look at this default uh, customer option here. So what this says is set the customer queue flow. And if we look at that, you'll see that uh, you can select it now. I created another one uh, called Customer uh, Wait Queue, and I'll show you the reason I did that. Uh, but let's first take a look at the default customer queue. So again, we'll go back over to Call Flows. So that's it. It's pretty simple. It's got an interesting icon and in called Loop pri uh, Prompts. And let me show you how that works, because you'll use it a lot. Basically, in this situation, we could have played a pre-recorded audio, uh, but we've chosen to use text-to-speech. And thank you for calling. Your call is very important. We love you. Please stay on the line, yada, yada. And then we play music. Um, and then what's going to happen here is you could add another prompt. It could be another recording another text-to-speech, uh, and you set the uh, timing such that you can loop through this uh, playing a different prompt each time. You can also um, establish a call flow. So let me give you an example. I told you I've already created one. Let me bring that up here. So contact flows. I've created one called uh, Customer Wait and Queue. And this one um, is a little bit different. It just provides some additional functionality. So what we're going to do here is start the call. We're going to bring in that loop step. But this time, the loop step is going to be interrupted every 30 seconds. And you could add another prompt to the loop if you like. But in this example, I don't want to add another prompt. I want to extend the call flow. So I'm going to come bring them in here, play some music, or play a care message, wait 30 seconds, and then we're going to pop out, and we're going to once again say to the customer, would you like to continue to hold, or would you like to bail out and uh, get a call back? And 30 seconds later, if they stay in queue, uh, we'll continue to prompt them with these options. Now you can, again, extend the period of time. You can extend the number of messages. You could extend the uh, uh, call flow itself by offering some options. A good practice in a contact center, a best practice is we've already answered the call. We've taken the caller through the menu selection. We now know who they want to talk to. 
If that person's unavailable, that agent's not available, the queue's busy, let's, we've already answered the call, let's, let's hold on for 30 seconds more and see what happens. Uh, so it's not a good practice to offer them a bailout option immediately. Let's save that for uh, someplace a little further down the queue line. Let's uh, log back in and go to contact flows. Let's find our main greeting. And what we want to do here now is in the icon that uh, transfers to flow. Let's get some more room here. We want to change this guy now. So sample Q flow for reasons we discussed earlier in this presentation. We're going to change that now and we're going to send it to enter the queue step three. And at that point, uh, we have revised our original call flow to allow for some of the features that we want the caller to experience if they're in queue waiting for an available agent. Okay, before we check the call flow, let's uh, check a couple of settings here. I want to make sure that uh, in the routing profiles, we have in fact associated the queues that uh, we plan to use here with our basic call profile, uh, excuse me, our basic routing profile. So as you can see, you can add uh, queues to the routing profile. So agents are associated with a particular routing profile and the routing profile is also associated with the, uh, your particular inbound phone number. So we look, we look okay here. Let's go over to contact flows. Let us, uh, just so we can trace it out, we're familiar with the schedule, nothing there. And we're familiar with the main greeting, but we've added this uh, queue processing or queue handling. Uh, that's been discussed earlier in this script. Let's just place a call in here. I've got my agent uh, here. And I've got uh, an external phone set up for placing a phone call here to the command. So let's go ahead and set up the phone call. You have reached us during our normal business hours, one for sales. Dial two for support so and three for ticket two, the main status. After checking the uh, schedule, let's uh, press one. Please here. note the average wait time is less than three minutes. So we we came in here. We're now average wait time. Press one to continue to hold press for the next available technician, or press two in order to receive a call back. Thank you for calling. Your call is very important to us and will be answered in the order it was received. Sales. And we hear the whisper that says, whisper that says six, a six selected, selected channels. Channels. So I hope you have so found this informative. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.